Namaste. My name is Suhani Jori and I am from Allen, Texas. Thank you for the opportunity to present the content of my research paper. My paper, whose title you see on the screen, will look into ancient Indian agriculture to determine its antiquity and to find out how advanced it was. One does not need to be a historian. A new scholar like me can simply visit the internet and learn that almost everything of value, such as astronomy, Sanskrit, mathematics, science, philosophy, law, democracy, etc., came from Europe as seen in the following slide. Agriculture is no exception to the commonly accepted paradigms which declare that mostly everything of value came from Europe or Near East. Ask any Indian and may regurgitate the facts that tomatoes, potatoes, etc. came to India from outside, alluding to the impression that maybe all agriculture came from the outside. In fact, as we will see later, that is exactly what is believed about agriculture, that it came to us from the Fertile Crescent. We will look at literary evidence from the Vedas and scientific and archaeological evidences to determine the status of ancient India's agriculture. We will first look at the Vedas, since we believe that the Rig Veda is the oldest written record, preserved orally, of Indians' ancient history. Rig Veda can be, be viewed as a poetry on nature, since it deals with nature a lot. It mentions numerous plants, herbs, medicinal plants, spices, etc., which gives us some hints about ancient India's agriculture. The Rig Veda and the Athar Veda have an entire sukta on agriculture. As seen on this slide, Kalp Sutra has mentioned 519 different plants. The four Vedas between them have mentioned 740 different plants. The Sushruta Samhita, a treatise on medical knowledge and surgery mentions 700 different medicinal plants. Determining the age of agriculture in ancient India would be as simple as knowing the dates for the Rig and other Vedas, Kalp Sutra, and Sushruta Samhita to start with. The problem arises due to the varying estimates for these books. The colonial historians seem to have arbitrarily given the the dates for these documents. By the way, the Rig Veda mentions events much older than even 10,000 years before present, and it is considered by many historians to be a running document that was written over many millennia. The other three Vedas are from a later period than the Rig Veda, but still a lot over than the 1000 BCE, or later date was assigned to them by colonial historians. Collectively, the Vedas have many references on methods of farming, irrigation, fertilizing, crops harvesting, and agricultural tools used. For example, barley, which is one of the oldest agriculture products of ancient India, is referred to as Yava in Vedic Sanskrit and is mentioned in the Rig, Yajur, Athar Vedas in the verses shown in this slide. Theophrastus was a Greek botanist in the 4th millennium BCE. He wrote two books on botany and is commonly referred to as the father of botany. The Vedic seers had already listed a large number of botanical names and information of about 740 plus plants, many millennia before Theophrastus. The question then arises, who was the real father of botany? Theophrastus or the Vedic seers who wrote about them many millennia prior? Carlinaeus in the 18th century CE created the naming systems for plants and animals that are still in use today. Some of the names he gave to the plants are derived from or the same as the classical Sanskrit names for those plants as given in Vedic literature. Vedas mention agricultural methods of threshing and planting of crops in rows. The Rig Veda, Ramayana, Mahabharata, etc. mention silk, linen, and woolen clothing. 
Outside of India, China first mentioned silk in 6500 BCE and Egypt mentioned linen around 5000 BCE. The Indus Valley Civilization started exporting agricultural products by the 4th millennium BCE and also had extensive irrigation systems, canals, water storage, and sewage by the 3rd millennium BCE. Mandal II of the Rig Veda mentions that Maharshi Grihatsmad first grew cotton, spun into threads, and made clothing for the first time known. Also, oldest evidence of cotton fiber coincidentally preserved is dated to 7000 BCE. Cotton does not survive passage of time. However, this is one of the few cases where it got crystallized in a piece of copper and lived to tell a story many millennia later. Similarly, in an archaeological dig in Tel Sof in present-day Israel, archaeologists found cotton that survived after attaching itself to something else. The analysis of this cotton revealed that its origin was from India. The fact that this was dated to 5200 BCE indicates that there was export of cotton from India to Israel at least by 5200 BCE. During ancient Greek and Roman periods, Europe imported cotton from the Indus Valley civilization. Europeans were fascinated with cotton for they could not have enough for it. They described Indian cotton as sheep that grows on trees and produces wool, and they graze on grass on forest floor. Germans call cotton baumwolle, meaning tree wool. Greek historians Herodotus in 4th century BCE wrote in his book Historia, in India, there are plants that produce sheep's wool. The Hebrew word for cotton is karpas, in Sanskrit, Khan is also called Karpas. Keep in mind, Hebrew is a language that has been around since 1000 BCE. Anushasana Parva is the 13th of the total of 18 books of the Mahabharata talks about tree worship. Many places in the Vedas talk about worship of certain trees. The practice is still prevalent in India today. Pipal is called the tree of enlightenment and Banyan is the tree of life. They're both evergreen with dense leaves providing shade. They also belong to the family of Crassulacean acid metabolism or CAM. Plants from this family take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen even at night. Hence are considered healthy for humans. Agriculture in India started around 15,500 BCE. Prior to 16,000 BCE, the climate was too arid to support agriculture. Monsoons then started. Mus musculus, the Indian species of mice, is the progenitor of the mice all over the world. Archaeologists and genealogists have noted the appearance of house mice in India starting around 15,500 BCE and tracked its spread from India to the Mideast, Europe, Australia, China, Africa, and finally to North America. Barley and oats were found in the Horton Plains of Sri Lanka. Also, evidence of using fire to clear lands for agriculture was found. It is key to keep in mind that during 15,500 BCE, Sri Lanka was not an island. It was connected to the mainland of India. Sea levels have since risen about 430 feet and have disconnected Sri Lanka from mainland India. Cerulea pollen that gets preserved over many millennia was found by archaeologists from the Nilgiri Hills area, dated to 11,500 BCE. Carbonized rice grains were found dated from 11,000 BCE. 
When wetland rice cultivation happens, some bacteria called diatoms can get washed away and could survive in a lake bed. Evidence of these diatoms were found in Lahura Deva in Uttar Pradesh. These were dated to 7,300 BCE. Rice cultivation may well have started earlier than this date. It's just that these particular diatoms survived because they got shelter under a lake bed. They are the oldest evidence known. At a dig site in Juzi near Allahabad, they found evidence of grapes, grains, legumes, and amla cultivation from the 7th millennium BCE. That would make this the earliest known grape cultivation in the world. As for the navigational capabilities of ancient Indians to have moved around and caused mice and agriculture to be exported to Europe, or maybe even South America, an ancient seaport carbon dated from 18,000 BCE was found off the coast of Pumpuhad in Tamil Nadu on the coast of Bay of Bengal in India. The Fertile Crescent is the area of present-day Iraq, Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine, Syria, North Kuwait, and Southeast Turkey. History tells us that Fertile Crescent was first to do agriculture and export it to the rest of the world. Now, the Fertile Crescent has the younger Dryas from 10,000 800 to 9,600 BCE. This was a period of extreme cold in areas of the Crescent and in areas north of that. It would have been hard to do any agriculture during that time. India, having had agriculture from 15,500 BCE and cotton having moved to Israel, albeit later by 5,200 BCE, and Indian mice having moved to the Middle East and Europe, it is more likely that agriculture moved from India to the Fertile Crescent instead of the other way around. More research using advanced scientific methods will bring out the truth someday. Rice, cotton, barley, hemp, ashwatha are native to India and have been grown in India from anywhere between 10 to 17 millennia. Agriculture in India is a lot more ancient than believed, possibly from 15,500 BCE, when most of Northern Europe and Northern North America was still a ball of ice, Indian rishis had knowledge of over 740 plants ever since Vedic times, possibly seven to nine millennia ago makes one wonder about the title of Father of Botany being given to a botanist from the first millennium BCE. Botanical nomenclature of plants done in 18th century CE, some used ancient Sanskrit names. The Father of Botany may have been declared to be from ancient Greece from the first millennium BCE, but the great-grandfathers of Botany were ancient Vedic Indian people from 7 to 12 millennia ago. Cotton and mice are known to have traveled from India to the rest of the world. It is very likely also that agriculture of grains, rice, etc. may have also been given to Europe and the Fertile Crescent by ancient Indians who were the first agriculturists. Hope more work is done to establish the correct sequence of events. With the advent of high-resolution scientific methods that is bound to happen, no bias of preconceived notions. Any group can stop the facts about history from coming out. Thank you. Namaste.